and I don't I, I feel like I the first people I met the first group of people I met were probably not the best influence mm -hmm. yeah for me uh, but I connected with them because there were people from home you know mm -hmm. who speak the same language <laughs> hi yeah you know we can have nyao choma yeah. and all that stuff um, so I, I met these people in my life so for the first time in my life I remember setting foot in a club it in was uni. unheard of <laughs> in our household okay yeah, i love your household <laughs> you could not you're going to the dunda to do what what is the dunda <laughs> so i did not know what those things look like or what it's i had no idea mm. so i you know i met these people and um it's opening up a completely different world for me and then i remember my my best friend her name is melody she um, is a bishop's daughter and um, so we connected and we were sort of at uh, sort of at similar places in our lives although she had lived most of her life in Canada mm. um, so we've gone into this life but there's a part of you that's pulling you back to this is not what I grew up with mm. it, it's like a tug of war between what you know the, the foundation you know you have been given and this new life that you're being introduced mm. to so I remember um, so we apart from going to school you're working around the clock so sunday sunday morning you're probably sleeping mm -hmm. you're you tired. know you're just tired yeah. you know and is thinking let's go to church <laughs> yeah jesus catch me here <laughs> yeah meet me where i am lord <laughs> so so i remember um then I, I like to tell this story because again it was another it was a turning point for me was um this one day we go we've gone to the club my best friend and a, a bunch of our friends who've gone to the club and it's um so i don't even know why i was at the club because i don't like noise either <laughs> i really don't just peer pressure <laughs> so, um so we're at the club it's noisy you know people are blowing smoke in your face it's it's just, it's chaotic in the club um and then and then i i don't even i, I don't even enjoy dancing you know so i'm usually <laughs> seated somewhere sipping on my whatever and um, as we're sitting there, my friend Melody loved to dance and she was a really good dancer. So she danced and then she got tired and she came and she sat in the booth next to me. And then now we, we start having this conversation. Now we're having a, a very sober conversation over very loud mm, music. Mm. So we're like, I don't feel like I belong here. And she's like, me too, you know. I, I feel like, I really feel like I want to go back to church. She's like, yeah, me too. I just, I feel like I just... We are shouting, okay. I, no, I'm, just, I'm not shouting. <laughs> it's like, I think we need to go home. I'm like, yeah, let's go home. So we left. That's the last time I ever set foot in a club. And when we left, we connected with, um, at the University of Calgary, there was a church there called the U Church that we'd heard about. And we're like, let's go check it out. So we checked out the U Church. I think Melody had been there a couple of times before. And we plugged in. Became members. Um... We started going to church and we started singing at church. Mm. Um, so Melody and I and a guy called Jeremy would 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 sing together like a trio. Um, so that is where I finally like started finding my 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 roots again mm. in God. Um, yeah. Yo. Yeah. Crazy. Who would have thought? Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's continue with this story. So yeah. so when you were finishing. What made you then decide? Did did you know you're going to come home? Did you want to explore Canada? Did you want to mm -hmm. go to the states? Did you mm -hmm. want to go to another country? Mm -hmm. What happens now as you're coming to an end? As I was coming to an end, I um, because opportunities are opening up. There. Like for example, oh, yeah. you told us the university was. Oh yeah, the opportunities were really opening up. One, I knew that I wanted to do my masters. I started to apply at the University of Calgary, but I also knew that I wanted to move away from classical music because I felt like, yes, classical is good. It gives you a really good foundation as a musician, but I don't want to do classical as a career. Mm. And because of what I had tasted at Berkeley, I wanted nice. to, it was so nice. <laughs> I wanted to explore more of that contemporary sound. Mm -hmm. So I started to look at schools in um, California. There's the Musicians Institute in California, which I felt and I think Kanji had gone to that school. Mm. I felt like it was still such a good school. Maybe 
more affordable than Berkeley would be and I'd get what I want. I could even do a diploma. It doesn't even have mm. to be like a full degree or something. So I was exploring all these things and I was sending out my applications everywhere. And then what happened was, um, I remember one time talking to, I talked to my family a lot. And I remember this one time talking to my mom and I'd had, I, I was having uh, one of those feelings you can't quite shake off that things are not right at mm. home. And what happens when you're living away out of the country is you're shielded from so many things. Mm. We don't want her to panic. Mm. So they're telling you, but they're not telling you. Mm. So this one day I call my mom and I tell her, mommy, I had a dream that, uh, that, that daddy is not okay. Like something is wrong. What's going on? And the, at first they gave me a very, um, not the real story. It was like a cover story. Mm. Yeah, that he, he slipped on the stairs and he had he had himself. He had that had actually happened, but mm. that was not the issue. Um, so I, I I told her I told her, mommy, this this is what I'm feeling. This is what I, I have been. Mm. Just tell me what is going on. And that's when she told me. Um, they both told me that he's very ill. Um, he'd been diagnosed with cancer. And um, so I'm like, okay, I need to be home. Mm. So my mom is like, okay, um, I'm coming. She was coming for a conference in Canada that summer. She said, why don't you let me come? And then we can come home together. Mm. So when she came is when, you know, we really got to talking and I realized this, my dad was really sick. Mm. So that mom does her conference and we come back to Kenya and- um, And you finished school this time? I had finished school. I had, no, I had like two units before graduating. Mm -hmm. So um, so I've come back to Kenya. My dad is sick and he, he tells us, at that point he tells us he's been given five months tops. Whoa. And he's like, but you know, you know, my dad being who he is, he's like, I, I, I want you guys come, I want you to go back and, and do your masters and fin you know, finish and do your masters. And, and I'm like, do you honestly think I'm going to board a flight mm -hmm. and leave you not knowing if I'll find you the next time I come back. Um, so I, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm not going anywhere. But I had, it was a very interesting situation where I was living off of my suitcases for, I could be going back anytime. <laughs> yes, yes, you know, yes. I'm here, but I'm not here. Um, so. Uh, and when, what, what year is this? This was 2008. 2007? Okay. 2008? <laughs> yeah, I love that. I know, no problem. And <laughs> when, let me just ask, when you had gone to yeah. Canada, did you used to come back home or you just stayed there? So I stayed there. I mostly just stayed there. Um, this was after 2008 because 2008 was when you had post election. Yes. I was in Kenya. I'd come to visit that Christmas okay. for the first time. Okay. I'd come to visit. And then now the year after. So this should be. Uh, later 2008 2009 where mm. i've now come to see my family mm -hmm. and and my father is sick and everything um so you know i thank god my father really fought that thing and he 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 lived past the time they told him yeah. but he started doing so well he was doing so well and i was like okay now i think maybe i could go back you know that is okay i i could go finish my masters or start my masters finish the units and start my masters but then what happened is now, my music, Nishikilia, had started to Ex yeah. get played. In fact, let's let's sort of go back to the music. Yes. Because Nishikilia, you said you recorded like 2004, 5? Yeah, 2004, 5. Yeah. yeah. So while your music is being played, yes. you're not in the country. I'm not in the country. Nobody knows how I look. I know. You know? <laughs> yes. I, I, this, it's so funny because this is when I was entering the music industry. 2005 yeah. is actually okay. when I entered the music. So yeah. I don't know you. I've not yeah. seen you. Yeah. It's just this Kathy G video that I'm being shown. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't until literally the Groove Awards that yes. I saw you. Yes. And I'm like, oh, so that's Kambua. Yes. So Nishikilia starts getting played and you're not in the country. I'm not in the country. So and by being played, I mean every day it became the biggest song in the country. It was getting a lot of mm. airplay, and um, and it surprised me. You know, I was like, okay, you know. Um, so I'm now. Yeah, in that's a testimony. Any God yeah. has worked for you. It's hustled yeah. for you. It, it that's how, and that's how I know it's not about me. It's not, you know, I'm such a good hustler. I really pushed my music. It's none of that. So um, I'm now in the country. Nishikilia is playing everywhere. 
I'm starting to do a gig or two here and there. People are starting to, to, to put a face to the name. And the music is just, it's getting a life of its own that mm. I, I didn't know it would get. So now I'm at a different crossroad of, okay, do I go back mm -hmm. to Canada and leave this? This is taking off in like a speed that I never imagined. Do I let it go and go pursue this or do I stay and see where it leads? So um, I'm still living off of my suitcases, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Mom is like, are you unpacking? Not yet. <laughs> so, um, but I remember the day that I decided that I'm unpacking and I'm staying. But there was the degree that I haven't, I have two units to finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, and my dad's like, you need to finish. So what we did was I, I registered for two classes because they were not music classes, but yes. these general units. I registered at um, the Nazarene University here and I signed up for those, I think one was communication and something. And I did those two units. And then um, later on, I went back to Canada for my graduation. Mm -hmm. I went for my graduation and also packed my thing. I told my friends, this one sell, do whatever you want to do. I am out and I came to Kenya and just said, let me, let's do this music thing and see where it goes. Okay. Yeah. I can boy have a story in a three quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I love the back end. I mean, the, yeah. the, it's I'm understanding a lot about you from this. Let's talk about now your first album, Nyumbani. Is it? Nishikile. Nishikile. Oh, Nishikile mm -hmm. is the first album. It's the first album. So yeah. Nishikile, mm. you've you've recorded the song Nishikile. Uh, by the time the song is blowing up, have you finished all the other songs? Um, a lot of the songs are with Uzele, there's a bit of Desmond Bosire. I had finished all of Actually, before I went to Canada, this album was complete. It was complete. Mm. And, but it was going, it was settling in. I remember my brother was helping me. My elder brother was helping me um, dis distribute it, take it to... But it was a very close circle because it, we didn't really know. We didn't have networks, like distribution networks or whatever. Yeah. So he was doing the best he could. My mom was doing the best she so could. So you had the, the physical album? I had album. the physical CD, yes. Whoa, okay. Yes, and yes. you had shot some videos for that? I had shot Bit. the one video that, that disappeared. <laughs> On the Kathy G one? Yes. Okay. Then I, I, it was the only video that, that you had, I had shot before going to Canada? Only video. Okay, okay. So now when this, when, um, when I, when I've decided I'm here and I needed more videos Okay. and because Nishikilia was a song that everybody wanted, we thought, let's do, let's shoot this video. So I, I shot that video, um, it cost me 15,000 shillings, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of money. <laughs> hey, you had made 50 Gs. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, um, so we shot, uh, Nishikilia and, uh, it, it again, it took now the song to yet another level because it was now your visual, the visual mm -hmm. aspect of it came in and yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So my my journey only got bigger and better. So I'm singing I'm singing everywhere. I'm singing in churches. I'm singing yep. at gigs. I'm singing. Everybody was calling you to sing Nishikilia. Yes, everybody calling you to sing Nishikilia. It was good and it was tough be tough because I now wanted to do other songs. You who could go to school? <laughs> yeah, I want to do other songs. I have other songs, guys. But they're like sisi tunataka kama Nishikilia. And this is where I mean, my fans, we love, <laughs> we love our fans, but sometimes we want to move forward yes. and they're like, no, 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 it's not like I come in, you know, yeah. and that's, I, I had to like really think, okay, do I want to now put out songs that sound like Nishikilia because that's what the people want? Or is there a space where as an artist, I can um, decide this is the path I want to take mm -hmm. and guys, trust me, follow me. Follow me, I'm taking you somewhere. Mm. I promise it will be good. Yeah. It won't be like that one. <laughs> but it'll be good. But trust me, man. Just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I did this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So um I started now to work on album number two. Ah wait, album number two is it's a story coming. Okay. Nishi this Nish Nishikilia album has like about twelve and a lot of songs. Yeah. It's over ten songs. Mm -hmm. And has more videos in it. Mm -hmm. There's some co-writing done with movie there's some songs that's fact, um, on album number two. Oh, that's album number two yes so what one. okay tell me other songs that are on nishikilia you didn't record you didn't release anything else so video -wise? i did not do any other video um so album number one had nishikilia it had uh, the song the song i did with giddy called walking it was more like a rock-ish sound <laughs> Another one I did with a producer called Brian Evusa. Um, uh, by the way, let me say, if you want the Nishikilie album, 
you can get it right now by clicking on the link in the description. Yes. You get because people this is your first album. Mm-hmm. You can actually get it by clicking on what you can see on the screen right mm-hmm. now. Go to that link in the description. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a song called Ngoma Tucheze. Ngoma Tucheze. Uh uh-uh, not that oh, one. That, that's the other Ngoma one. Ngoma Tucheze. So that was another Jonah uh, song. The, all that. Now, the thing about Nishikilia was, it was because I had not, I didn't even know what Kambua sound is. That album had everything. Mm-hmm. Just, it had a jazz track, a hymn. It had everything. Um, so I never, I never pursued more videos from it because I also felt like some of the songs are not very reflective of who I was or mm-hmm. the way I wanted to express myself. I mean, this, this is later on. Myself, yeah. Okay, yeah. I get so I just, I let the album, beyond Nishikili, I said, I'm not going to shoot any other video from that. Um, and, and what was, what, how was it, be, I, you know, I, for me, there's always a power in an artist's first album. Yeah. There's, there's, it's either you're experimenting and trying to find yourself. It's yes. either you found yourself and you're expressing yourself for the first time. Um, but there's, there's always a process that people take to make that first album. Mm. So for you, how has it been in the studio knowing mm. that you're working on your album? It was very exciting, Esther. It was very, very exciting. And I remember us just, we, we put in a lot of time into it. Mm. Um, the, the other reason why this album was so, everything was so different from the other. They were all like distant relatives, all the songs. <laughs> I was working, I was doing, I had very many producers mm-hmm. on that album. Um, so this producer gave me this sound, this producer gave me this sound because I was trying to find me. Mm-hmm. What does Kambua like? How does she express herself best? Um, so it was good. I, I should, uh, you know, b- before I even tell you about fully about Nishikili, I should mention that um, also the time bit before I left for school, I had started being signed on by Lucas of Ogopa. Wa 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So, <laughs> you how can you linger that story for I so? Do, so <laughs> too much has happened in Kambua's life. Right? I love it. Okay, let's talk. That's crazy. Yeah. How did how when how did you even meet? So Lucas of Ogopa.